Aloha, this is Dr. David Bilstrom from the International Autoimmune Institute and the Autoimmune Lifestyle, and this is Did You Know? And we're coming to you once again from the Big Island in Hawaii, and we are at the Puako Petroglyph Archaeological Park. Oh my gosh, there's all these petroglyphs carved onto these rocks, unbelievably hard rocks all over the place. Now this right here is the biggest one. This is a big flat lava field. Uh, Jody, would you scan please? This whole, just gonna scan to the other side. large canvases towards the end of his life when he was losing his vision and he painted colossal ones and in Paris for example they got rooms full of these colossal ones oh my gosh this is like all his canvases colossal canvases put into one it is absolutely fascinating so I'm, I'm, I'm so honored to be at this uh, uh, for the Hawaiian Islanders a very sacred spot and I want to acknowledge that this is a very sacred spot and we come here only with the, the, with that knowledge okay so today we're going to do talk about cerebral folate deficiency uh, and the title of the article we're going to discuss is from um, developmental medicine clinical neurology 2008 may entitled a milk-free diet down regulates folate receptor autoimmunity and cerebral folate deficiency syndrome so once again uh, here's an autoimmune disease system becomes um, thinks it's being invaded by something different than us even though it's very close and so then it starts attacking our own folate receptors and creates this cerebral folate deficiency so folate one of the B vitamins B9 is super important for the brain just like all the B's are B's are important for everything particularly during uh, gestation during pregnancy for the developing ba baby and then the first few years of life and so symptoms of cerebral folate deficiency overlap a lot with autism these kids have a lot of autism stuff going on but it includes agitation and insomnia anybody know small children that are very agitated and can't sleep mm -hmm. uh, autoimmune disease um, also de deceleration of head growth the head stops growing which is not good because if the skull stops growing the brain stops growing just not as much room psychomotor retardation so movement and brain just don't move like they should, right? They're not moving like they should. Um, low tone, kind of floppy, uh, ataxia, their gait is unsteady. Anybody know a child who's uncoordinated? Lots of ch children are very coordinated, others are not. I'm, I'm so fortunate. I started walking at age nine months. I didn't have this, I don't think, but there's a lot of kids out there that are, are not coordinated. That's ataxia, right? And then, um, spasticity, dyskinesias, abnormal movements, okay, like two, two movements, all that kind of stuff, and then epilepsy, okay, like seizures. So, um, this often starts when breastfeeding stops, because then these animal milk proteins are uh, uh, starting to be given, and this autoimmune disease, folate receptor alpha antibody autoimmune disease begins. 16% uh, of the children, though, with cerebral folate deficiency, this autoimmune disease, clear completely. Every one of these not nice things, really bad things, totally clears into 60% of kids with a milk-free diet, an animal milk-free diet. Oh my gosh, 60% gone totally by getting rid of animal milk products. Wow. Without going milk-free, the severity of the autoimmune disease just worsens over time, gets a lot worse. Wow, we can turn it off or do nothing and make it get worse. Yuck, right? Let's do something about it. And as I mentioned in the previous study, 75% of these children with seizures totally clear their seizure disorder by going animal milk free diet. Wow. Remember the last video I did? The seizure medicines deplete full. 
fully worse, make the situation worse. The actual medicine she's using for the seizures, because of fully deficient in the brain, depletes fully in the brain even worse. Jeez, let's go animal milk.